Hi, I'm Corey Bardman. I'm a professor at the Rockefeller University in New York and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. I'm going to talk to you today about how we can use genes to understand the brain and behavior. I'll discuss that in the context of our own magnificent human brain and also in the context of simpler brains, brains that range from the brains of worms to flies to mice to dogs. So why should we think that we can understand behavior by studying genes? And why do we think it's important to understand behavior studying genes? To illustrate and answer those points, I'd like to use this first slide to tell you about the familial risk of important psychiatric illnesses. If one member of a pair of identical twins suffers from the neurodevelopmental disorder autism, the identical twin has about a 70% chance of having the same disorder. This is vastly higher than the risk of this disorder in a sibling or in the general population where it's less than 1%. Now the fact that this risk is so high in identical twins, but much lower in non-identical twins, tells us that there is likely to be a genetic contribution to this important psychiatric disorder. The same is seen when examining other important neurological or psychiatric disorders, including the disorders of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, or anxiety disorders. These are disorders that collectively affect millions of people. They can be severely disabling, in fact, severely disabling even to, short, to the level of shortening the lifespan of the people who are affected. It's very important to us to try to understand what is occurring to allow genes to go wrong and to interact with environmental risks to generate these kinds of problems. So, how do we understand what genes can do? What can we learn from studying genes about different kinds of disorders? Well, the very first genetically defined brain disorder called phenylketonuria, or PKU, was identified in 1934, and it already provided for us important information about how understanding brain disorders and the genes behind brain disorders, we can intervene productively to improve the lives of people who study from these disorders. So phenylketonuria is a very severe developmental disorder. Children with phenylketonuria are mentally delayed and retarded. They have delayed social skills. They're hyperactive. They have movement disorders. They have severe seizures. And all of these result from a single change in a single gene, the gene for phenylalanine hydroxylase, a metabolic gene that converts the amino acid L-phenylalanine to L-tyrosine. Why does the absence of this enzyme cause this severe disorder? This information, this chemical information, propagates from the level of the gene to the level of the individual. The gene, a mutation is in phenylalanine hydroxylase, leads to the production of toxic products. These toxic products accumulate in neurons, and because of those toxic products, Neurons, which are supposed to have elaborate structures, instead are smaller and simpler in their structure, and many of the neurons die. As a result, the brain of these children has altered function, and the behavior and their medical disorders result. So all of this is a form of toxicology, but once we understood what the gene was, it was immediately clear that this was something that could also be treated, because phenylalanine is a chemical that is present in our diet. And simply by limiting the amount of phenylalanine in the diet of children with PKU, it's possible to limit many of the effects of this very severe disorder. So intervening at an environmental level can lead to great improvements in the health of these individuals. Now, for most brain disorders that I mentioned in the first slide, we don't have anything like this ability to intervene. We don't know the genes as well. We don't know their effects on the brain, and we don't have anything as simple as a dietary fix. But this is our goal, is to be able to understand brains well enough to intervene in each brain disorder, whether at a genetic level, an environmental level, a cellular or a brain level, to try to improve the disorder and the lives of the people suffering from it. 